Hi, this is Rod Rorick, plastic surgeon in Dallas, Texas. Welcome back to Rorick Knows Podcast. Well, I'm delighted and honored to have with me today the world famous Jane McGarry. And <laughs> all of you know Jane McGarry. She's been the host of Good Morning Texas for a while, right? And she's had a career. Ten years. Ten actually. years. And wow. here's what's funny when I think about it. I have been on TV in Dallas, Fort Worth, yeah. every weekday, a few days off here and there, but every weekday for 40 years. Are you kidding me? And I look like this thanks to Dr. Rory. No. <laughs> <laughs> she hasn't changed a bit. That's, that's amazing. Is that? Yeah. Can you, I mean, time, it's like really seriously, I think about that and I'm like 40 years. Yes. Oh my gosh. That's Where um, did the time go? I know. It's amazing. You know, and I came here in the eighties and you know, you were a rock star then too. And I said, mate, someday I want to get to know Jane McGarry. So, so tell us about what, what keeps you so amazingly vital? I mean, what, what do you, what do you do? I mean, obviously you look great, but how do you Thank keep you. doing what you do and at the pace you do it? How do you do that? I mean, some days when I wake up at four in the morning and I think to myself, ah. Oh. But you know what? I honestly think one of the most, and I, I talk to women's groups a lot yep. about aging well right and aging well i think means enjoying your moments to the best of your ability for your entire life right and i think part of aging well is having a vocation or a purpose that you're really interested in right and i'm really really interested in being inspirational if i can to women who um are like me i mean you know you never had this problem because you're you're a guy. So, oh. you know, guys have always gotten to age. I mean, I remember watching TV and there'd be Dan Rather, Walter Cronkite, right. all these guys who got wiser and, you know, and silver foxes or whatever as they got older. Well, women weren't allowed to do that. So I think it's an uphill battle for women in some respects. But I'm thrilled today to see more women embracing age. I mean, look, Dr. Rourke, look at it. You and I right. both. Right. We have a third of our lives in front of us. That's right. That's what I think of. I've That's got right. a third of my life right. in front of me. Right. So I, this is like the beginning right. of it, the best part, I hope. It, I agree. And I guess, and you never look back. You always look forward because, you know, you can't change the past and the future is here. And I like, and of course, Jane is, is an incredible advocate for all of us, but especially for women. And, you know, it's on, and your social media is, your, your handle is Real Jane. I, I, actually, it's uh, Real Jane is my blog, but yes. on social, it's just Jane McGarry, Jane McGarry. on and, everything. Yeah, and yeah. make sure you follow her. I mean, she's... Or you, on, uh, on TikTok, it's The Real Jane McGarry. The Real Jane. Oh, the God. Real Jane McGarry, because oh. Jane McGarry already got it, exactly. whoever Jane McGarry <laughs> okay. is. So yes. I'm The Real Jane McGarry I mean, on TikTok. it's amazing. And you know... That's amazing. I mean, I, I mean, TikTok. I, I'm, I'm terrible at TikTok. I mean, but uh, no, you're not. You're good. No, well, I mean, I, I try, <laughs> but, but you know, on, on Instagram, I'm a little better. But you know, and I think you mentioned one thing that's really important is purpose-driven. You have to have a purpose because you just can't play golf or walk the dog every day. Nothing wrong with dogs, but you know, you can't just do that every day, right? And you have you get up at that early. You're a rock star at six in the morning. You're blowing it up, right? And and every day of the week, that's that's pretty purpose driven. Yeah, it is. It's it, well, I mean, you know, I wasn't always that way. I think when I was younger, I was more about being on TV and the coolness of that. And I think it was more about me. It's funny, I have people who tell me now, I mean, you're a plastic surgeon, so we're gonna talk a little bit about looks. I have people who tell me now, I look better than I did 20 years ago. I think that's interior. Right. No. I think that's, I think that's uh, the growth, the hard work, and the love for myself that comes through and now, when you love yourself, you can really give to other people. Right. And so I'm just thrilled to be, um, I feel extremely grateful to be where I am. I mean, I know you talk a lot about gratitude because yeah. I watch you, yeah. I watch you, <laughs> the elevator I talks, see yeah. you. Yeah. But I think that when we approach, when we're fortunate enough to have worked through some of our issues and we can get to that place in life where we can truly be grateful for health, for friends, for um, yeah. an adequate income, whatever it is, 
then I, that is the point you reach in life where life becomes really good. Right. And, you know, it's but things that matter. You know, then there's very yep. few things that matter besides you know, our, our health, our family, <laughs> and, and a few other things, right? That's right. Because yeah. <laughs> after that, you know, it really doesn't matter a lot. And, and in uh, my case, my, uh, my faith. That, yeah. That's oh, absolutely. Become, that, that, absolutely. The flip in me probably has become, you know, I was raised on the front pr- row of the Methodist church. Okay. I went to church every Sunday all my life. My mother s- directed the choir, was the, you know, was, was the organist, all that kind of stuff. But it was just sort of on the periphery of my right. life. So and since I've evolved into that is genuinely my number one thing is wow. my faith and my purpose and what I feel like I was put here to do. Um, since that changed, my life really changed in a lot of respects. And it took work to get there. It didn't happen overnight. Yeah. No, I agree. Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I, had, a, I had a similar, well, I grew up in a ranch. And, of course, my mother, you know, you know she is a phenomenal Catholic. And, you know, we, I think, you know, she's still praying for me. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it, it, you know, you got to put him first. Otherwise, you know, nothing else matters. And I agree. I agree. So, so what else drives you? I mean, I, when I watch you on Good Morning Texas, you're always right on. You're always vibrant. I mean, and I think that's what's different because I think, you know, from 10, 15 years ago when you were doing the news and mm-hmm. stuff, it, well, first of all, you know, now you're doing the things you love to do. And I, it shows, you know, when you're interviewing incredibly great people. And we're going to talk a little bit about some of your great interviews and right. all what. So, but how, how does that differ today from 10 years ago? I mean, you're I, right. Now you're more purpose driven. And I think it's really gratitude, honestly, because when I, a lot of times, I'm tired some mornings, trust me. I mean, there's yeah. some mornings, or some mornings, I get on the scale and I'm like, really? I tried so hard yesterday. But when I, the the last thing I do before the red light comes on is I say, wow, I am so lucky to be here. I'm so privileged to be here. Let's have some fun with it. Right. That's, that's, and that just, that sparkle in your eye, that, that, uh, that whatever it is, I think comes across to the to people who um, who are watching TV. Yeah, no, I know, I know it does. And so, I mean, you you talk a lot, you know, to women's groups, and and you're you know an incredible advocate, and you're an incredible role model. So, what's been that shift lately? I mean, obviously, you know, you found you know who you are and what you're doing, and you want to mm-hmm. share that, right? That's what you want to do. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, one of the reasons that I share uh, stories about myself is because. I didn't always, I realize looking back now, I didn't always, um, I had a lot of issues with self-love and self-esteem. I mean, I remember when I used to be on the news, you're talking about that, and I remember every time a commercial would come on, I would pick up the hand mirror beside me and I would look in the hand mirror to make sure everything was perfect, to make sure everything was just right. That was me trying to make sure I was good enough on the outside to make up for what was lacking on the inside. Great. So I, over the past six years, I would say, I've done an enormous amount of work on learning to accept myself as I am, learning that I am good enough, um, and I, I've done a lot of work on it, and that really has made the difference. So this is a couple of years ago. I was you know, having a pity party, feeling sorry <laughs> for myself, crying. You know, I mean, it was it was I was going through something really difficult at the time because I was having to give up some of the old things, some of the old ways. I was having to give up. Let me put it this way: when we don't love ourselves. We get our love from, or we get our feeling good from mothers outside ourselves, right. our validation from whether it's work, whether it's a guy, whether yeah. it's, you know, all these other things. Well, those, you have no control over any of those. So when those right. crash and burn, you're left in pieces sometimes. So this yeah. was one of those times for me. And I was crying and I was, I, it was really, really hard. And at the time, the person who was working with me said, Jane, do you understand what an inspiration you could be? Because people look at you just because you're on TV and all that, and they think, wow, her life must be really perfect. Right. So if they look at you and they realize, hey, she's been through stuff. Her life has, her life has had its really hard, hard times. And she has used these various strategies to develop her own self-love and look now at how much better her life is. That's the example that I want to set. Yeah, that's brilliant. That's brilliant. So, so what what advice do you have for women that are, you know, like starting like half your age and and saying, <laughs> you know, like when you were Jane at, 
you know, 30. Or, 30 like, or 35. So what, so what would you do and say to yourself then, saying, hey, listen, you know, just look to your inner I would self? Quit, I would quit depending on those things outside myself a lot earlier. Because it, it's like they say... You, you, the lesson will keep coming to you until you to get learn it. it. Yep, I know. <laughs> and it just gets harder. Yeah. So, but <laughs> so I would. It's hard to learn that though when you're 30, because you know, and you know, when, when we were 30, you were we were invincible, right? Yeah. And, you know, nothing could touch us, right? I, mean, I look back now. I look I, back at some of the things that I did, some of the things about who I was, and I'm like, who was that person? Right. It's like it's almost in a lot of ways a different person. And I wish I could have learned a lot of the things. So how earlier. do you convince that person today to to say, hey, you know, this is what you should do now and you know, when you know you were thirty. I mean one way is speaking and telling my story and maybe there's a little tidbit here and there that resonates with some woman and she goes, Oh wow, I've experienced that same thing. Let me change. Maybe I need to look at that before because Jane's telling me it doesn't get any better until you fix the real problem. Right. You know That's right. <laughs> All those things that are helping you make it eventually so that's one that's one way, I yeah. think. Is and that's one reason that's what I what I was saying is that day I was in tears. I decided then I would try to deliver that message to other women that my my pain wasn't going to be for no purpose. That's for darn sure. <laughs> well, that's good. So how do you do that? I know you speak a lot, and I know you talk about it sometimes on uh, when you when you're on TV. But how do you how do you deliver that? And, and you know you're, you're very powerful in your social media messages too. And uh, um, and I know you say. Hey, I have my birthday, and you said you thought about it, and you really thought about it, and I love. Okay, what's Jane going to know? I mean, that's. I'm 68. Yeah. I just amazing. turned 68, and yeah. I had a lot of people who were like, "You're kidding me." I know. <laughs> I know. I saw that. Yeah. You know. I mean, and this is an interesting conversation. One of the things I've always appreciated about you, first of all, when I was looking for someone to go to for any kind of work or skin treatments or Botox or whatever. I, I was a journalist. I Googled who's the best <laughs> and I found Dr. Roick and he genuinely is the best. So that's one thing I appreciate well, you is your, 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 your artistry, how good you are at what you do. But the other thing is, is you know, you and I, we always kind of have this joke that um, our joke is I always come in and I'm like, because different people want different things. Some women want a complete transformation, and that's good. You do what you do, you right. do, you know. Right. For me, I was too scared. I was like, I just want to look a little fresher. I just want to look right. a little bit. And what I love about you is that you always respected exactly what I asked you. You always, your execution is perfect, but you always respected, you, you were like, cool, we'll do exactly what you want, Jane. You know, you right. never tried to talk me into anything that would make you look better. Right. You know, make you look like, wow, who did she go to? Well, you know and, I mean? and, and Jane would sometimes see me like an hour before she was going on the news channel. So, okay, I said, okay, we're doing to do this. And then I'd watch you and I said, oh my God, I hope she didn't bruise. So it was amazing, yeah, no. You've been great. And, you know, it's good. I mean, nobody's perfect, but, you know, you try and listen to your, your patients. I mean, if mm -hmm. you can, it's very important because sometimes, you know, you hear a lot more when you listen. Well, and that helped me trust you. Yeah. So that I, because it's a kind of scary place to be, honestly, when sure. you're sitting there in an office and you're turning your face, your whatever, uh, whatever over to someone else. And it's, and it's, it's your it's, life, yeah, yeah. It's a scary place to be. So you helped me develop that trust, and I've always appreciated that yeah. about, about you. Well, that, that's very nice to say. And, and you know, and I've appreciated you. And you. And no, it is. And, you know, and Jane's very upfront and honest about what she wants <laughs> and what she doesn't want. And, you know, that always, I always say, yes, I agree with that. And, you know, half the time, I mean, most of the time when a patient wants um, something I, I I totally respect that, but a lot of patients want more, and I say, listen, that won't look good on you. No, you never say that because you know exactly what you want. <laughs> but a lot of patients want a lot more, and I'll say that doesn't look good on you. Now Jane never says that because she knows what she wants. But <laughs> but I do that. I say, you know, that won't look good on you. Those big lips and stuff. So so, but it's good. But you know, you know, you know, you're 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 a pro, and you know exactly what you want and what you don't want. And I think that's a good. So how do you how do you 
empower women to do that? I mean, you know, how do you do that? How do you well, tell again, them when goes, you speak about that? How do that you goes do that? to the validation from outside. You know, I mean, if you look at too many pictures of Kim Kardashian or oh. whoever, and you're thinking to yourself, I should look like that because oh. they are thus and such, because they are wealthy, because they are well known or whatever. That's where the self love key, the piece comes in. You've got to love yourself enough to know that they look like that, and you don't need to. You don't even need to knock it down. You're like they choose to look like that. That's right. cool for them. But I know me. I know my lane. I've got my lane. Right. Self love is about. I think one of the ways that you can develop it is in being vulnerable and authentic, and that's a scary thing to do but when you're vulnerable and authentic and you say what it is you really feel I mean I give this example have you ever been like with a good friend and you're talking or maybe it's your spouse or whatever and you guys are talking and you know what you think about something and you're saying what you think and the other person says something well blah 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 blah, blah and all of a sudden you begin to go maybe that's not really what I think maybe I you know may, maybe I don't think what I think that is a big don't. red flag that's a big red flag for you to say, wait a minute, stop, hold on. Yes, I know what I feel, what I feel. It's valid, it's legitimate, and what I feel is what I feel. That's the beginning, I think. Acceptance of what I feel is real and it's okay. It's right. me, it may not be you, it right. may not be what somebody else wants, but it's me. I think authenticity, vulnerability are key to developing that sense of self-love. Right. And it's really about self-respect, too. You know, I mean, you say, hey, listen, this is what I'm thinking, not what you're thinking. And I think that's good. So what are the three take home points you have as we close this uh, part of the podcast on, you know, that women should um, aging well? I think that was one of the things you had asked me. Yeah. Yes. Aging well, yeah, aging was... well, but also just advocating for yourself. Well, I think one thing that's, okay, so if you're talking about advocating for yourself, set boundaries, set those boundaries. Okay. It's set. okay if somebody else gets mad at you. Now, you don't have to scream and yell and all that, but you can be very polite, but do set boundaries. It has to be done. I mean, I have set some even recently with my adult child, and I wish I would have set them earlier. Mm -hmm. We both would have been better off. Wait. I, you know, I, me being wishy-washy, that wasn't, that wasn't helpful to him. So right. anyway, set boundaries. So set boundaries. Be authentic. Be authentic to, the, to them and to yourself. Be right? authentic. Yeah. And um, something that helps me a lot, again, I um, would call myself a woman of faith. So every morning I get up and I journal and pray and set my intentions for the day. That's what's critical about it. I don't care how long you journal, or, you know, whatever, but setting those intentions and thinking to yourself, who am I? What do I want to do today? Where do I want to be present in the moment? You know, what do I want? Who am I? That is key. And kind of check in with yourself throughout the day. Wait a minute. What was I thinking earlier today that I wanted to do? Just it's a it's a habit. Right. You develop. Yeah. It's it's developing a habit like anything else. It's it's shedding the bad habits of trying to please everybody else and starting new habits that are different and foreign, but will are the building blocks of really good self worth. Wow, great, wise words from a wonderful woman, <laughs> Jane McGarry. Follow her on Instagram, social media, TikTok. Jane McGarry or the real Jane McGarry oh, on TikTok. The real Jane McGarry. <laughs> All right, it's always a pleasure, Jane, having you. Thank you, you rock. Thank you. So yep. do you. Yep.